Are these enemies game shakers or game breakers? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 video game enemies who ruined everything. For this list, we're taking a look at video game enemies that kind of contradict what their games communicate to the player. Let's go. Number 10, Anointed Enemies, Borderlands 3. Typically, games will make enemies tougher by equipping them with stats or increasing base stats. Borderlands 3 earns brownie points for getting more creative with its new game plus enemies, known as the Anointed, but it also goes a little overboard. Eventually, the game gets to a point where enemies will boast buffs that can kill you in one hit. Given how many enemies you usually face in one combat encounter, you'll begin dying at an unreasonable rate. Because, hey, it's New Game Plus, and we clearly didn't make it hard enough the last couple runs. Guess you can say that they put the Annoy in Anointed. See what we did there? Uh, all, all right. Number 9. Creepers. Minecraft. Creepers have every right to be on this list, as well as any other list dealing with irritating enemies of any kind. They are the bane of a Minecraft player's existence. After hours of harvesting wood and trying to make your house as big and majestic as it can be, a creeper can easily decimate that hard work in a couple of seconds. The worst part is that these guys make absolutely no sound, meaning they can easily catch you off guard and potentially kill you. Needless to say, creepers really know how to ruin your day. Sure, phantoms may be incredibly annoying, but at least they reinforce sleeping as part of the game. Creepers just feel like a living sucker punch. Number 8. Cazadors. Fallout. New Vegas. Ever since the series migrated to Bethesda, Fallout's combat has felt slow and a tad clunky. But hey, at least that means you're safe from enemies that boast insane agility, right? Wrong. The Cazadors have developed a notorious reputation among the Fallout community for how fast they can dodge attacks, as well as their ability to poison you. Yes, we know we can use vats on them, but when they soak up bullets like a freaking sponge, sometimes it just feels easier to give up. Honestly, Cazadors make bloat flies seem pleasant by comparison. Number 7. Skulls, aka Parasite Unit, Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain. Let's get something straight. We all know Metal Gear Solid is primarily a stealth series, right? Therefore, most of the game should be centered around sneaking past enemies and quietly taking them out, yes? Okay then, so why in the hell does Phantom Pain have enemies like Skulls? Not only does the game tout those guys like many boss encounters, but it is virtually impossible to do any non-lethal takedowns against them. By the time Phantom Pain was released, MGS was already established as a game of sneaking past enemies, not trying to be Call of Duty. Phantom Pain? More like a pain in the butt. Number 6. Cliff Racers. The Elder Scrolls 3. Morrowind. Most enemies in the Elder Scrolls games will leave you alone if you run away for a certain period of time. But not the Cliff Racers. These persistent bird brains are practically a forced combat encounter. When you attract the attention of a Cliff Racer, it will follow you everywhere you go until you deal with it, which can make a player dread traveling to a new area. Choose to ignore them too long and you could wind up with a deadly pack of them on your tail. These enemies are so widely hated by the Elder Scrolls community that people have gone out of their way to create mods that completely removed them from the game. You finally arrived, but our records don't show from where. Number 5. Ghostfish. Ninja Gaiden Series. Look, the Ninja Gaiden series has a lot of frustrating enemies to contend with, but without a doubt the most infuriating of the bunch is this often unassuming but cheap enemy with a tendency to swarm. The ghost fish have plagued Ninja Gaiden players for years, 
frequently ambushing at the most inconvenient times and able to attack you regardless of you blocking. They can even knock you down or hide in your treasure chests. If you want to make it out of those ambushes unscathed, your best bet is to just keep doing dive attacks from one spot to another. Otherwise, you might end up losing a shocking amount of health and or getting extremely frustrated. Number 4. Marauder and Tentacles – Doom Eternal Opening the portal now. We were considering the original version of the Arch Vile, but the Marauder and Tentacles of Doom Eternal have the community irked. For starters, tentacles will pop out directly in front of you and give you a good smack before you can pull the trigger. This makes it insanely hard to survive Ultra Nightmare runs. As for the Marauder, some players have had issues with how he disrupts and slows down the flow of combat, demanding your full attention. In order to stand a chance against him, you basically have to clear the room while he's assaulting you. Yeah, id Software may have gone overboard with these guys. My eyes have been open. Number 3. Stone Angels – Ghostbusters – The Video Game The only hope we have is to stay alive and keep them away from the Ecto. The Ghostbusters game is a blast to play, but only until you reach the final level and hit the gate smash segment. It's here that you'll encounter flying stone angels, and the only way to beat them is by using the slime tether, or the capture stream. Unfortunately, the intended mechanic only works half the time. The slime tether may fling these cretins into objects occasionally, but more often than not, they'll either send them flying into the sky and fail to smash them, or just give out and do nothing. These enemies single-handedly cause some players to simply give up and not bother finishing the game. The kid's on to something. Number two, Medusa Heads, Castlevania series. As much as we love the Castlevania games, one thing that really irritates us is how bad the knockback is whenever you get hit or are touched by an enemy. This is part of what makes the Medusa Head so infuriating to deal with. All these enemies do is gradually move towards you with an incredibly wide movement arc. In other words, they are literally a waste of space. If the Medusa Heads attack us like every other enemy in games, we probably wouldn't mind them too much. Alas, they're just another mindless obstacle to make Castlevania even more rage-inducing. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Boss Fights – Deus Ex Human Revolution There's a major problem with the boss fights in Human Revolution. You see, the other entries on our list today might flip the formulas of their respective games, but the impact is usually limited to a single level or occasional encounters. These boss fights, by contrast, go against everything the game encourages you to do. If you haven't played the Deus Ex games, they allow you to invest in skills that can help you complete missions in various ways. However, the boss fights don't provide any of this flexibility. So if you've been putting points into hacking instead of damage, you're going to have some incredibly long fights and or die rather quickly. In other words, you're punished for playing how you want. Oh shit. In the mood for more awesome gaming content? Be sure to check out this video here on Mojo Plays. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. 